Good day, viewers, and welcome to another time of study. We trust God that God will refresh our hearts and spirit by reason of His Word as we study together today. We continue our discussion on the sub theme that we introduced last week the supremacy of Jesus Christ over biblical heroes. This is the second in the series. And our topic today will be focusing on Jesus and Noah. We trust God that God will help us as we look into that in the name of Jesus. Amen. With me in the studio as our resource persons are our fathers in the Lord. By my right is the Venerable Dr. Nambe Ikechuku Okbono. He's the Archdeacon, Durimi Archdeaconry, here in Abuja Diocese. You're welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Listeners, the Lord will bless you as you share with us this, evening, this today. Amen. And by my left is the <coughs> Venerable Dr. Joseph Chibogo. He is the vicar, St. Manx Anglican Church, Pape, also here in Abuja Diocese. You're welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, viewers. Welcome to this study. May God bless you as you join us. Like we always do, we would like to encourage you to invite everyone around. It's always joyful and delightful sitting to learn at the feet of Jesus. Our aim in our study today will be to identify the similarities slash differences between Jesus Christ and Noah. Secondly, will be to understand the supremacy of Jesus Christ over Noah. And then finally, to understand the role of Jesus Christ and Noah in saving mankind. I'd like us to put all those three aims in perspective as we move along, trusting that we would have achieved these aims by the time we'll be rounding off the discussion. In our tradition, before we get into the introduction proper, I'd like to invite our fathers and the Lord to help us read the background text. The Venerable Dr. Okmonosa, Genesis chapter 6, 9 to 22. Venerable Dr. Chibaogosa, 1 Peter chapter 3, 18 to 20. Genesis. The, the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. And all flesh had corrupted their way on earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubit from above and set the door of the ark in its inside. We shall make it with lower and second and third decks. And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy them from under heaven, all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark, you and your sons, your wife, and your son's wives with you, and of every living thing on, of all flesh shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds after their kind, of animals after their kinds, and of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. You shall Take for yourselves of all food that is, that is eaten, and you shall gather it to yourself. It shall be food for you and for them. 
Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. <clears throat> this is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Venerable Dr. Chibogusa, First Peter 3. From First Peter chapter 3, verses 18 to 20. For Christ also has sin suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long sufferings of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You know, Daddy, as you read that scripture in Genesis, something just jumped up in my spirit. And I'm praying we'll have such men and women in our time, in our dispensation, as we walk with God. The last verse of that Genesis, verse 22, says that Noah did according to all that God commanded him. And I'm praying that the instructions that God will bring our way today in the course of this discussion we will be thorough in our obedience in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Introduction. When the destruction of the world loomed in the times of Noah, God favored Noah for he was a just and perfect man living in an immoral generation that we can see clearly in verses 8 and 9 of that same Genesis chapter 6. God commanded him to build an ark for the salvation of mankind. The ark of Noah saved only eight people who were members of his household, including Noah himself. When we read Genesis chapter 7 verse 7 and Hebrews 11 7, we will see all those. God's desire is to save us all, not just eight people. He gave the gift of Jesus Christ to save the world and by his blood draw the world back to eternal life with God. That popular scripture, John 3.16, tells us that. Jesus described his second coming to be like in the days of Noah. The scriptural reference there is Matthew 24, 37 to 39, but maybe we will not be reading it now because in the course of our discussion, I think it will come out clearly. Just by way of summary, I just want to bring out something from the second line in our introduction. God favored Noah for he was a just and perfect man living in an immoral generation. So the drought for me there is that the environment might be polluted even like we have in our time, in our country, across the world. There might be pollutions here and there, but when God looks out, will it find in you a Noah? A man who will be described as just and perfect. If you consider the account of Job, that we said he was a righteous man, the most righteous man in all of the East. Would there be witnesses in our time that you and I, by reason of our work with God, are just men? The Lord indeed will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'd like to get into the study guide. And Venerable Dr. Okunosa, we would like to begin with you. You will help us with Genesis 6, 1 to 7, just for emphasis, and help us address the first question. Discuss the reasons for the destruction of the world in Noah's time, sir. Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came in, daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that 
every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Mm. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have made them. Thank you this very much. The word of the Lord. Thanks and be to God. God. Thank you very much, sir. The question is, <clears throat> discuss the reasons for the destruction of the world in Noah's time, sir. I think for this passage, it is obvious that God destroyed the earth because of sin yes. and godlessness among the people. Yes, sir. A particular note is the issue of sexual immorality and violence. Mm. We see here that some angels could no longer resist the attraction of women, daughters of man, mm. and misuse their power, power as angels, power of God invested in them, to turn themselves into human beings. Mm. Uh, they can say into human beings and marry these women and bore children with them. Mm. And that was a real disaster, so to speak. And, um, and so God was not happy with that. The evil way that happened, God was patient, speaking to human beings, thinking that men will repent mm -hmm. and live right. But man was not prepared to, 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 to obey him. Mm. And so the first thing he did was to reduce the age lifespan of man to 120 years. Mm. That was found in verse 3. And he said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. He is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. Yet man did not did yield and decided, decided to complete the destruction of sinners. God took a decision to be a complete destruction of sinners. Mm. And in the passage, we see here the action of the Holy Spirit, even in that early days, that the Holy Spirit was ministering to them. Mm. And he said, verse 3, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. The Spirit of God was striving with man to turn them around unto repentance. Yes, sir. And uh, so it, God reduced the age of man. I find that human mind is essentially carnal, is, is base. It prefers to dwell on sin rather than righteousness. Yes, sir. It prefers evil to good. So it is only by the influence of the Holy Spirit that man can return and subdue these wrong desires in him, which those will refuse to do. Um, the carnal mind can be subdued only by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. But those who will willfully resist the power of the Holy Spirit will grieve the Holy Spirit and be left with hardness of their heart and blindness. If they, if they repent, God will receive them and bless them. Business people refuse to repent. Yes, sir. And God, we are told here, God continued to warn them. And this is a man's span, age span. It's in those days men lived very long. Noah was tenth of the generation of Adam. And if I find that those, 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 those ten people in that line of the descent, they lived 900 and something years each, yeah. mm. including Noah. The exception was uh, just two of them, who the, the one lived 800 and something years. And then um, his son, Enoch, lived 300 and something years because Enoch didn't really die because he pleased the Lord. Said, the Lord took him. Mm. Others who had their full lifespan lived 300 and something years mm. on earth. And God says, I will reduce it. So you find that that was even reduction of what God wanted us to have on earth. So when we think we are living 80 years, 90 years, and we are clapping for ourselves, we are even below where God had reduced man uh, by his own punishment. Mm. So, wickedness and godliness continue to increase and multiply. So, the earth was corrupt before the Lord. Yeah. The Bible tells us it was filled with violence. That's verse 11. Yeah. The Let's earth also to. was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. 
Yes, sir. In verse 6, let me just let me finish this. In verse 6, verse 5, he says the imagination and thoughts of man was continually evil. Mm. Man's heart, which is the seed and the base of all action, was continually evil. evil. He didn't care. The of God which strove with him was continually resisted by man. He did not bother to, 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 to repent. He did not do evil out of carelessness or mistake. It was a deliberate planting by man for him to do evil. Okay. And God had to show himself a God of judgment. Yes. God is a God of love. It's also a God of judgment. of judgment. So destruction came. Thank you very much, sir. I think exhaustively our Father in the Lord has tried to bring out in concrete terms what happened in that world in the time of Noah. Just by way of summary, sin is at the heart of the reason why God destroyed the world in Noah's time. Venerable Dr. Sir, just in a short word, any <coughs> input to this? Um, the explanation was very exhaustive. So, what the only issue is that God saw the wickedness of men. Mm. And he said, I will not continually strive with men. Because it's like his um, compassion was so much. He doesn't want to destroy men. But because it is his own creature, he wants to main, still maintain human beings, but give them a limitation. So instead of staying longer to waste or to destroy what he created, and I shortened it. The life plan. Awesome. Okay. God indeed will help us. There's something jumping up here. Even the 120 here and the 70 or 80 that some of us, you can see that is, they all amount to reduction. God indeed will help us because these issues are even playing out in our time today. Some of us are still striving with God in different areas. Some of us are still disobedient. We trust that God will bring that heart, that, not the stony heart now, but the heart of flesh so that we hit the counsel of God in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Venerable <coughs> sir, Jesus described his second coming to be like it was in the days of Noah. It will help us read Matthew 24. 37 to 39, and then you jump to verse 44. Remember, Dr. Akmanasa, Luke chapter 17, 26 to 27. And then let's discuss that. For Jesus to have compared the day of his com second coming to be like that of the days of Noah. Matthew chapter 24, verses 37 to, to 39. 39 and 44. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. be. Verse 44. Verse 44. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour shall ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Thank you very much, sir. Remember, Dr. Puno, sir, Luke 17. Verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them. So uh, in the light of Jesus' words here in both scriptures, let's discuss that, uh, do I say, analogy now? The, 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 the comparison yeah. between comparing the second coming of Jesus Christ with the days of Noah. Just like today, in the introduction, we said, when destruction of the world loomed in the times of Noah, even today, uh, a few months back, we all were part of the destruction. Partly, just an example of what it should be. Mm. The sickness that ravaged the whole world. Yes, sir. People were running helter-skelter. Even when it was, take for instance, when they were saying that countries were locking down. 
Nigeria did not. Mm. Assuming we don't know whether it would have been like that or not. Assuming we locked down two weeks before we did. Then anybody that came into this country by then was screened and quarantined. I don't think that there would have been any problem for somebody to have also imported that because it was an importation. Yes, sir. People were told something they didn't listen. Just like in the days of Noah, they were told that the world is coming to an end. Destruction is coming. Nobody was listening. They that would have laughed at Noah, they say would this have, old man. They were laughing at him. <laughs> yeah. From study, we learned that the building of the ark took more than 100 years. Mm. And when Noah was building, he was still preaching. So look, imagine an old man carrying, uh, he may not be old because that's them, uh, people live long, 900 and something years. So between age 1 to 300, 400, you would have been a very young man also. Mm. But look at him carrying the, good ah, wood. the wood he was Building. going to use. Gathering people to come and uh, do the, 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 the building of the ark. And they were just looking at him. Any day they pass through the workshop, they will look at And as he's building, the ark is growing. The Bible said that it has about three stories. Stairs, the floor, the first floor, the second floor. When he had finished the ground floor, second floor, third floor, they will be looking at what is this man doing? Look mm. at this foolish man. Mm. He doesn't have anything to do and he's doing this thing. When you go near him now, he will tell you that the, cave, the world is coming to an end. How will the world come to an end? They will just be eating and drinking, giving in marriage and uh, marrying. That is one thing. Like what is happening today, people are engaging in sinful activities. When you are still pre you are preaching, they don't care. Mm. People are engaging in secular activities. Mm. It, like even this matter of... Uh, uh, sickness that ravaged the world that just of recent. Some people didn't even believe that God can do anything. Mm. They believe in science. I remember one woman in his, in, um, in, uh, in in US, uh, Paul C. or what, I don't know, uh, that, that um, uh, speaker of House of Representatives. When Trump was talking about praying to God, he said that science is the answer. Science is the answer. There was something somebody posted on Facebook and said that uh, um, science has replaced church. The Bible, I said blasphemous. And the person said, sorry, Father. Because people are now thinking that doctors are now the pastors. Hospital is now the church. Medicine is now the Bible. So, and that is what the people, imagine a co-prime minister of United Kingdom that was healed from that virus. After giving appreciation to all the medical um, uh, personnel, give appreciation to everybody, he did not even mention God. I listened to that his broadcast. I, I, when I came out, I was telling somebody, I said, ah, look at this man. He was not grateful to God. So, my brother, they were, we were talking about secular activities. So, people are busy living life neglecting God. Just yes, like uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 will tell us that a time will come, people will not think about God. Awesome. They lack the knowledge of divine things. These are the things that we can compare. Thank you very much, sir. I think these things are also replicated in our time. People don't pay heed to instructions. You know, I've heard somebody say that your own heaven or your own hell is here. That perhaps if you're born and uh, you have all the beautiful things of life, you're already in heaven. And if there is, if you lack any of those things, that's your hell. That beyond here, there is nothing. All this preaching, I've listened to somebody speak in that direction. God kept on warning them. And let me also say this as we try to round off. The science that you talked up, I just need to bring this perspective to it because it's something that is topical every now and then. Somebody just taps into the whole quantum of knowledge that God has made available. Yes. It is even God that gives you insight to tap into, to draw from Just it. Just a little of it. Of, of it. So you can't divorce God out of science. I think St. Thomas of Aquinas spent a great deal of time in his literatures saying that science and faith are not in conflict. That is, God is at the base of it all. Venerable Dr. Sir, just your parting word as we get to the break. Yeah, you see, people were evil and violent in the days of Noah. Are we different today? 
No, sir. We are still evil. And um, let me say that I watched a, a, a movie where it's also with women buying children to do human sacrifice, buying babies for human sacrifice. Ah. And I also have seen some clips how Boko Haram slaughter people, human beings. These are wickedness in the world today. And we find that even today, a lot of, a lot of violence by armed robbery, a lot of sin, prostitution, homosexuality, and people are trying to justify these things, what it should be. And you can see that we are also decadent, if not more decadent than the days of, uh, Noah. of Noah. You can see that even those who are supposed to manage, manage the affairs of the nation, they, 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 they steal the government money and to, to the detriment of those that are supposed to care for. I remember in the days of coronavirus, we were told the government had shared large amount of money to people to, 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 to relieve them from the impact of, uh, of, of staying at home. But we find that many people didn't get it. Hmm. They feel like they shared so much money, but the same government that couldn't share voters' card. They feel like they had shared so much money. You can see evil in our land, yes, so terrible. Yeah. And like uh, Reverend Venerable said, people will have watched Noah building this ark and be laughing at him. People will have worked for him and he paid them in the, in the process. They will go in and come out to what, what he was doing. And to them, it was a laugh, laughing matter until the flood came. came. When the flood came, and we had locked in and gone in, so we have been knocking and begging, open, open for us. Mm. We, thought, we were part of those who built. We, we know us now. <laughs> you know? You're my, my uncle. Mm. It, it's, it's, it's too late. Mm. And some will have climbed on top of the ark uh, with a lot of something to stay there mm. so that uh, they will not uh, die. And eventually, after many days, they will, they, they will die there and be flushed out by, by the rain. Mm. The, the, the opportunities are available for us today that, that, that we can, like the people of Nonua, repent and not be hard hearted hard, 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 and take this new boat of life Thank you offered to us. Thank you very much, sir. I think God is helping us. He's already driving us somewhere. And I pray that you will not miss out of what God is already doing by reason of this discussion. We'll be back in a moment to continue. God bless you. Hello there. Have you ever wondered why Jesus spoke in parables? What do you make of the word parable? Do you find it hard interpreting parables on your own? Don't worry. We have answers to those questions on parables. Parables is a program that brings to bear what parable means and how it affects our day-to-day -day lifestyles, the church the individual and the society at large. Join me, Uzubechi Frank, as we explore the significance and the innate meaning of each parable of Jesus Christ. Coming to you every Saturday, 1 to 1.30 p.m. with repeat broadcast on Sundays, 7 a.m., Tuesdays, 3.30 p.m. and Thursdays, 7 a.m. from the ACNN. God bless you. Welcome back. It's been a an interesting session hearing from God as his word is being discussed. Remember, we've been looking at Jesus and Noah under the sub team, the supremacy of Jesus over biblical heroes. And God has brought us to that point where we are beginning to appreciate that his counsel is still coming in our time. We need to pay close attention so that what befell them in the time of Noah will not befall several of us in our time. And I've been in the studio with our fathers in the Lord the Venerable Dr. Namde Okbono and the Venerable Dr. Joseph Chibogo. Welcome to the program once again, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Venerable Dr. Okbono, sir, compare and contrast the work of salvation of Jesus Christ and that of Noah. You will help us read Ephesians chapter 2, 12 to 16. Venerable Dr. Chibogo, Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. And I will read some other scriptures in that place to also help us as we try to respond to the question. First of all is Genesis chapter 7 verse 1 to 7. I would like to read that. We read it before. Have we? Yes, I read it before. Okay, it's chapter 6 we read. Okay, the 6. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm reading chapter 7, 1 to 7 yes, now. Yes. Then the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven, each of every clean animal, a male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and his female. Also seven, each of birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of all the earth. 
For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth, 40 days and 40 nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters were on the earth. So Noah, with his sons, his wife, and his son's wife, went into the ark because of the waters of the flood. That's Genesis 7, 1 to 7. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. That at that time, you were without Christ, being alien from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once we are far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For the, he himself is our peace, who has made both one and, his, and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember, Dr. Yes. Sir, Matthew, Matthew 26, 26, 28. 26, verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let me also read First Peter 3.20 for emphasis. That was one of our texts, but just to emphasize again. Who formerly were disobedient when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water. So, Rebel Dr. Sir, Let's compare and contrast the work of salvation of Jesus and that of Noah. Noah built an ark mm. to save life. And as many as were willing, entered. Mm. But the then surrounding community said no. It appeared that even the family that have entered with him out of obedience, it was the really ark of salvation. Mm. We also find in First Peter, where we read now, Verse 18, for Christ also suffered once for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Yes, sir. That he might bring us like an ark again, mm. bringing us to God. This one is a much bigger ark that is spacious. Mm. And many as are willing to enter will be taken along. Now, in contrast of the two, Noah was given a timetable. He said in seven days' time, that's in Genesis chapter 7, verse 4, it says, mm. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And it will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. There was a timetable. Yes, sir. Going. But for Jesus coming, there's no timetable. It will come by surprise. Mm. And it, it, only God knows the time. Let you look at what happened in, in Noah's time. Um, the, 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 it was like the tsunami that took place in, in Japan. Mm. The tsunami... They said that the plate under the sea shifted and there was a water poured into, into Japan. After it, I saw a whole big ship standing on top of a bridge. Mm. Can you see the amount of water that came into the place and killed people? Uh, and so when we talk about the, when Bible talks about the ocean, ocean, ocean uh, the, 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 the floods of, of, of the ocean opening, floor of water opening and pouring in water, mm. we can understand it from what happened. Even side didn't expect it mm. when it happened in Japan. And so we see here, that uh, uh, when Dua said the foundation of the great deep were broken up in the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. So what God plans and what he does are known to him. And they were unexpected for Dua Noah's time. They will be unexpected for the when the, Jesus, Jesus come again. And so for us, it's important that we accept this new covenant which Jesus makes for us. Mm. He says, for this is my blood of the new covenant which I shed for many and for the remission of sin. Matthew 26, verse 8. That is a new ark of salvation. Yes, sir. The blood of Jesus that will take us, uh, those who are far away, into God's presence uh, at, at, the, at the rapture. Praise yes. the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, comparing the work of salvation done by Jesus and that of Noah, that, that one is that 
there was the fact that there was need for salvation. Mm. People have sinned and they need salvation. Secondly, Noah's time, only eight persons were saved. Mm. But His household. this time, the household of God includes everybody to all who believe. Now that we have a very wide mm. uh, a place to accommodate whoever mm. comes. Mm. The inclusion so criteria. Everybody. Is wider. It's an inclusive government. Mm -hmm. Now we look at the, the, the during Noah, animals were, also, were, were included in the things that were saved. Mm. But Jesus did not come to save animals, He came to save human beings mm. created by God, those who believe. Mm. So I think that. Looking at what happened during Noah's time and Jesus' time, Jesus is more interested in saving the souls, human beings, not animals. Thank and you. In the days of Noah, the animals were saved because they were replanted on top of the earth oh, yeah. after the flood. flood. But after the coming of Jesus, after the Armageddon War, the Bible that at the, before the white throne judgment, the earth will melt away in a bank. Mm. There will be no earth left mm. to replant anybody. Mm. New, uh, the new, new heaven will come heaven. and it meant yeah. purely for human beings. Awesome. That's why in Revelation, Bible talks about, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. God indeed will help us. But he's instructing that we pay close attention to what our Father in the Lord raised, that Jesus represents that new act of salvation. There is no redemption, there is no salvation outside of Jesus. And I'm excited when we always sing that hymn. It's a hymn that invites any man to accept Jesus. Have you been to Jesus for that cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? That is what will qualify you to benefit of this great salvation. Lastly, sir, God was grieved by what he saw in Noah's days. I think we need to read Genesis chapter 6, verse 6 to re echo that. God was grieved by what he saw. In Noah's days, you help us read that Genesis chapter 6, verse 6. Yeah, and it repented the Lord that He had made man on the earth, and it grieved Him at His heart. Thank you very much, sir. Now, the question is, in what ways do we grieve God today? And I'd like to quickly read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 32. Quickly, this I say, therefore. And testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of your mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts, who, being past feeling, having given themselves over to lewdness, to walk all uncleanness with greediness, but you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lot, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your rot, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole still no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hand what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ Jesus forgives you. Sir, in what ways do we grieve God even today? We've established in Genesis 6.6. 6, that God was grieved that he made man. Fast forward it to our time. Are there ways in which the modern day man is still grieving the heart of God? We, we don't need to go very far to go and look for what we are looking for. The answer is very clear. Yes, sir. People today, like in the days of old, are still wicked. Hmm. They are still busy looking at 
material things. They are still not thinking about spiritual things. Mm. They are still greedy, still unclean, still corrupt. I, I, imagine where um, somebody will tell you that they have palliative for the poor of the poor. And this palliative that is meant for the poor of the poor is right there in the house of the rich. Hmm. Somebody was telling me, these things that people are donating and giving to the government to go and give to people, is it not the, the government the, the, and the, those the, the, the days of, uh, that are corona. Still, still corona. eating it in the days of Corona? I still told them, I said, look, like in the days of Gehazi, if you eat the food of the poor of the poor, you will also become the poor of the poor, oh. no matter how rich you mm, are. Mm. Because you eat the food of the sick man, you will be a sick man. We are seeing such things play that out. That is it. Mm. So, uh, the, still grieving uh, God. Th those are the things that are happening today. It makes God unhappy. Mm. Because God, Jesus said, he had compassion on the people and he gave them breath. Now people had compassion on people and brought what people will eat and you are taking it. It is the height of corruption. People don't have faith these days also. They, they still don't have faith. Like in the days of Noah, Noah was telling them, flood is coming, come let us be. Even those people that Noah paid to build the ark did not enter Enters. the ark. Very many so of it them. is that many people who are preaching today, maybe because of their belly, they have churches, big churches. But some of them may not enter the kingdom of God. Mm. Just like in the days of Noah. There will be surprises. Somebody very, said heaven will be full of surprises. surprises. We need to so if we compare what happened in those days, we are still grieving God today. But I know that God being a merciful God will give us salvation. Amen. Okay. Just to also say something. You know, you know when you are uh, situating that with what happened in our country in the recent past, especially at the height of the pandemic, you know, some of us would think is rather far. We are talking to politicians. We are talking to those policymakers mm, who could. Mm. Some of us, even in our everyday life, we still is beat that wickedness. Mm. Somebody was just painting a picture of how in our everyday life we go to functions mm. and there are people queuing up in line for food. Mm. You know, there are others who will also eat. A but buffet. you go there, you want a buffet. You want to take everything. And you are, with, you are thinking is only... Mm -hmm. He was making the case that these politicians who become leaders are first of all drawn from amongst us. Yes. So don't just think we are speaking to people up there. In our little corner, some of us are also grieving God. But we also need to talk to our politicians because it's evil for you to eat what is meant for the generality of the populace. Somebody said, when a society cannot provide for the many who are poor, then it cannot save the few who are rich. Venerable Dr. Sam. Yeah, I, I think that today, it appears that we, in an attitude that we put up today, might be grieving God more than even the days of Noah. Noah, for example, was from the community and preached to his own people. Mm. And they looked down on him because he has raised one, one of us. Mm. In our own days, God had come in the form of man in Jesus Christ. We're not talking about people talking to us, we're mm. talking about God came himself to manifest awesome. itself among us so that we Thank can much, understand God's mind. Yet, we are still living in sin. It's a, ter a terrible thing. Today, even the clear word of God that you will follow, some people are modifying it to suit them, especially the liberal theologians, mm. to suit their thinking. And it is terrible. Some people slide, do it, slide even the reality of hell. Mm. They say, hell, don't worry. We shall be so many. When we fall into hell, we'll the, fire, the, fire, the fire. fire will just quench. And some, someone said, ah, I made the musicians to be there to be playing music for us. We'll enjoy the place. Run for your life. Mm. They said, hell is a sea of fire. Mm. That no matter how much pull that will come and like, put it off. You become part of the sea. Mm. God is calling us that our life today, we are grieving God. Awesome. And God is not happy with us. Mm. The way we acquire wealth in the society, what it meant for to, to take care of the whole country. Mm. Some of us are, some people are putting it to themselves. Even in the church, some are getting so wealthy, riding jets and things like that, competing. It, it will let us be careful that what we are doing is genuine so that we don't fall into the hand of God, grieving his spirit. God is concerned for us. He said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? That's Mark, Mark chapter 8, verse 36. Mm. 
If we get the whole world and lose our soul, what does it profit us? Thank you very so much. So we are grieving the heart of God by our acquisition and neglect of those poor, like my brother Venerable said, who are in need of the things that are in our hands. Thank you very much, sir. I think the instruction of God is so clear. It comes so heavy to us today. You know, the same warning came to them in the days of Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah. God had to take Lot and his family out and fire rained upon that city. Child of God, this world is prepared up for fire. It's prepared up for destruction. But God will take his own out Amen. before that destruction happens. Amen. How are you paying heed to the matter that God is raising today? The choice is yours. Conclusion. As God made a covenant with Noah, so he has made a covenant with us through Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him mm. shall not perish, but have eternal life. Mm. Each time I read this scripture, I read this scripture, I'm always excited looking at that whosoever, the inclusion, who is included. Wow. Not just the rich, not just the high priest, not just the poor, not just the man in America, not just the man in Nigeria, but whosoever, it doesn't matter. If only you will exercise your faith in the finished work of grace by Jesus. God will never break his promises. Therefore, let us be careful about his second coming. Unlike the people of Noah's time, we should daily continue to live in the hope of his second coming. Amen. Jesus will surely come back again. Amen. You know, the disciples, they were looking up. Bible said, and that angel appeared to them and said, This same Jesus that you see go up in like manner. So you will back. still come back again. And we are seeing the fulfillment of end time events even in our day. It is important we pay close attention to all these warnings. Mm. Food for thought. Noah's act was temporary, was temporary salvation. Jesus is the way to eternal salvation. I think that's another contrast we can also draw. Yeah. What Noah did was a temporary measure, just a stopgap in between. It was an archetype of what was to come. Jesus is the only permanent way to full salvation. Memory verse, we we'll read John chapter 3, verse 16. We will take it together. John chapter 3, verse 16. For, For God so loved, loved the world, that, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Very familiar scripture. What you do with what God has done by sending Jesus is up to you. Are you still living in sin? That's not the purpose why Jesus came. Are you still swimming in the ocean of unrighteousness? That's not the reason why Jesus came. The boat came. of life is open. You can mm. enter. You can enter. It's open. You can enter today. And God will welcome you home. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank God for today. How his word uh, is so heavy. It's come to me personally. And I'm trusting that God will help us all to respond accordingly. We thank him for what he's done by reason of this study. And we trust that we'll see you again next week on this same station. We're equally grateful to our resource person whom God has used mightily to bring his mind to us. Our fathers and the Lord, the Venerable Dr. Nam the Okbono. May God continually increase you and make the boundary lines fall onto you in places and places in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much. You will never miss that God bless you. in the name of Jesus. And dear viewers. Amen. Amen. The Venerable Dr. Joseph Chibogo, thank you, and we trust that God indeed will also continue to uphold you, even as you serve him in his vineyard, in the name of Jesus. Thank Amen. You. Thank you, viewers. Be with us next time. Until next week, when I will see you again, make sure you run into that ark, that ark of eternal salvation. God bless you. Mm -hmm.